let, let me just give you a general principle. Remember, we were talking about all the different cases. Suppose that you have an acid by itself. Then who does it react with? If you have an acid by itself, who is it reacting with? The water. So if you're going to write the chemical equation of an acid by itself, well, it's not really by itself, and it's, a, it's in a solution of water. So you would show it protonating the water. Um, and suppose you have a base by itself. Well, the base is really stealing a proton from the water, although we don't always show the water there. Um, so if you have an acid or a base by itself, you show it reacting with water. But what, but what about if you have an acid reacting with another base? Well, then you show them reacting with each other. And that's the situation that we're in here. Now, there is water. There is water. That's the solvent. But we're not actually showing water as a starting material because it's not participating in this interesting reaction. So if you have an acid or a base by itself, show it reacting with the water. If you have an acid and base together, show them reacting with each other. Make sense? Okay, so let's take a look at that. Let me take a look at that. Thanks. <coughs> Let's work this out on paper as well. Mm, Where did you get the point one seven from? So let's go through this systematically. Now, here's where we should be using the work that we did in the previous step and using our start change end table. So what should I put in for our? NaOH. Yeah. Um, would this be moles, though, or would this be concentration? What do you think? I think moles. Now, what am I going to put in for HNO2? actually a pretty, this is a little bit tricky. So, this will probably, so in order to make this easiest to work with, this will probably be easiest if we put everything into moles. That way everything will be comparable. Because otherwise, we can't compare these two solutions. We can't compare the one molar concentration here with the 0.1 molar concentration here because they have different volumes. They're not comparable to each other. But we can compare them easily if they were all in moles. So let's put everything into moles. So um, how many moles of HNO2 are we starting with? 0.1. Yeah, because it's just 0.1 molar times 1 liter. We've got 0.1 moles per liter of HNO2, and we've got one liter, so that gives us 0.1 mole of HNO2. 0.1 mole of HNO2. And how about the sodium nitrate? Um, 0.15. Working with one liter is very convenient, because the liters just cancel, and we end up with 0.15 moles of the sodium nitrite. 
One thing we should be very careful to do then whenever we're using a start change end table is always write down what units we're using so we don't forget about that. So unlike some of the previous tables we've done, this is a table in terms of moles. All right, and now how about the sodium hydroxide? How many moles of that? Um, 0.02. Let's see. So we've got one mole of sodium hydroxide per liter, because it's one molar. And we have 0.02 liters, which is the 20 milliliters. So it looks like you're right, 0.02 moles of sodium hydroxide. Now, why are we using moles here? Because when you're combining two different solutions, the most comparable concept is moles. Um, after all, how many moles of sodium hydroxide are there in the 20 milliliter solution? Well, there's 0.02 moles. And how many moles of sodium hydroxide will there be when we, com when we pour the 20 milliliter solution into the 1 liter solution? How many moles of sodium hydroxide will there be then? It's kind of a trick question. Still 0.02, still be the same amount. And what we still have, um, and the original buffer solution had 0.1 mole of this acid, and it'll still have 0.1 mole of the acid after we dilute it. And we'll still have 0.15 moles of this, but the concentrations are all going to change because they're getting diluted. All these concentrations will go down because they're getting diluted. So the most convenient thing is to focus on the number that's not changing, which is moles. We talked earlier about how this table would work for either molarity or moles. The one thing we can't do is grams, so this is fine. Now, this problem was just telling us to estimate the change in pH, right? Um, so I don't really know how precise an estimation, estimate they wanted, but maybe we can already start to estimate it. W remember, what was the old pH? 3.5, right? That was the old pH. Um, now, because this is a buffer solution, do we expect the pH to change by a lot or a little? little. Only a little. Um, although it would be possible to overwhelm that if we really put in a, a lot of base. Well, are we putting in a, a relatively big amount of base or a small amount of base? Pretty small. 0.02 is a relatively small number compared to 0.1. So we would expect that the pH is not going to change very much. So maybe we're already um, ready to say that the pH is going to um, rise closer to 4, but it's still going to be around 4. Maybe um, uh, you don't even have to do any more calculations uh, to see as an estimate that we're probably not going to get past 4.5. Um, oh, some problems, though, you have to actually calculate the precise pH. So we might as well keep working on this. So um, what should I do next in my table? Well, what are going to be the changes now? What's going to be the know, change? How do you know the limiting reagent is? Pardon me? How do you know what the limiting reagent is? That's an excellent question. That's exactly what we have to figure out here. Well, how do we know? Germs less. Yeah. Well, what does limiting reagent mean? It's just, the, it's just what you're going to run out of first. The limiting reagent is what you're going to run out of first. Um, and that's what you need when a reaction is going to completion. How do we know this reaction? What does it mean that a reaction is going to completion? Uh, if a reaction is going to completion, that means it keeps going forward until you run out of something. And the thing that you run out of is the limiting reagent. How do we know this is going to completion? Because one of the starting materials is strong. We have a strong base. It doesn't matter that the other one is weak. All you need is one strong acid or strong base for the reaction to go to completion. So what are we going to run out of first here? Um, NaOH. Yeah, sodium hydroxide, because we're starting with less of it. If there were different coefficients here, it might be more difficult to figure out who the limiting reagent is. But in this case, um, we're starting with less of the sodium hydroxide, and we're using these up at equal rates. They both have a coefficient of 1. So we're, both, we're using both of these up at the same rate, so we're going to run out of whatever we started with less of. So to answer your question, if two things have the same coefficient, then you're going to run out of whichever you started of, of less of first. That should, that should be pretty intuitive if you remember that the limiting reagent is just what you're going to run out of first. And if there's a coefficient, you do have to divide or something. If there's a coefficient, that's a whole, uh, that's a whole big problem. So maybe after, after we finish this, maybe we can do some limiting reagent problems, if you like. Um, but uh, there's a method for doing those. OK. Uh, but generally, usually you won't need to, usually, if you're doing acid-base problems, all the coefficients will be 1. And so it'll be easy to find the limiting reagent. It's uh, you're using them both up at the same rate. So whichever one you started with less of is the limiting reagent. So what will be our changes? Um, minus that's right this is a limiting reagent 
uh, the reaction has to stop once we run out of the base. And then what are our final amounts? Zero. 